Hey guys, Miss Goff here. Hope you guys are doing well. Um, I just wanted to hop on here and do a read aloud for you guys. Um, we're going to continue with Nancy Drew and the Hidden Staircase. Um, we're going to start on chapter 17. This chapter is called Through the Trap Door. Let's find out who's in the attic, Nancy urged as she ran from the room. Ellen at her heels. Mother, will you be all right if I leave you a few moments? Aunt Rosemary asked. I'd like to go with the girls. Of course, run along. Nancy and Helen were already on their way to the third floor. They did not bother to go noiselessly, but raced up the center of the creaking stairs. Reaching the attic, they lit two candles and looked around. They saw no one and began to look behind the trunks and the pieces of furniture. No one was hiding, and there was no evidence of anyone being there, said Nancy. The alarming thump was caused by a falling box or a carton. There's only one answer, Helen decided. The ghost was here, but how did he get in? The words were scarcely out of her mouth when the group heard a man's spine-chilling laugh. It had not come from downstairs. He's, he's behind the wall, Helen grasped fearfully. Nancy agreed, and Aunt Rosemary said, the, that laugh could have come from the roof. Helen looked at her aunt questioningly. You mean, you, you mean the ghost swings onto the roof from a tree and climbs in here somehow? I think it very likely, her aunt replied. My father once told me and my mother that there's a trap door to the roof. I never saw it and I have forgotten having heard of it until this time. Holding their candles high, and the girls examined every inch of the peaked beam ceiling. The rafters were set close together with wood panels between them. I see something that might be a trap door, Nancy called out presently from near one end of the attic. <coughs> she showed the others where some of the short panels formed an almost perfect square. But how does it open, Helen asked. There's no knob or hook or any kind of gadget to grab hold of. It might have been removed or rusted off, Nancy asked. She asked Helen then to help her drag a high wooden box across the floor until it was directly under the suspected section, and Nancy stepped up onto it, focusing her light on the four edges of the panels. The young sleuth finally discovered a piece of metal wedge between two of the planks. I think I see a way to open this, Nancy said, but I'll need some tools. I'll get the ones I found before, Helen offered. She hurried downstairs and procured them. <coughs> Excuse me. Nancy tried one tool after another, but none of them would work. They were either too wide to fit the crack, or they would not budge the piece of metal either up or down. Nancy looked down at Rosemary. Do you happen to have an old-fashioned button hook? She asked. That might be just the thing for this job. Indeed, I have. In fact, Mother has several of them. Let me go grab one. Aunt Rosemary was gone only a few minutes, and upon her return, she handed Nancy a long silver-handled button hook inscribed with Miss Turnbull's initials. Mother used this to fasten her high-button shoes. She has a smaller matching one for glove buttons. In olden days, she told the girls, no ladies' gloves were the pull-on type. They all had buttons. Nancy inserted the long button into the ceiling crack and almost at once was able to grasp the piece of metal and pull it down. Now she began tugging on it. When nothing happened, Helen climbed up on the box beside her friend and helped pull. Presently, there was a groaning, rasping noise and the square section of the ceiling began to move downward. The girls continued to yank on the metal piece and slowly folded ladder, and slowly a folded ladder attached to the wood became visible. The trap door's up there, Helen gleefully cried, looking at the roof. Nancy, you shall have the honor of being the first one to look out. Nancy smiled. 
And you mean capture the ghost? As the ladder was straightened out, creaking with each pull and set against the roof, Nancy felt sure, however, that the ghost did not use it. The ladder made entirely too much noise. She also doubted that he was on the roof, but it would do no harm to look. She might pick up a clue of some sort. Well, here I go, Nancy said, and she took a deep breath and started to ascend the rungs. When she reached the top, Nancy unfastened the trap door and shoved it upwards. She poked her head outside and looked around. No one was inside of the roof, but in the corner stood a circular wooden lookout. It occurred to Nancy that possibly the ghost might be hiding in it. She called down to Aunt Rosemary and Helen to look up at the attic ceiling for evidence of an opening to the tower. They returned, and Nancy, they returned to Nancy in a minute and a half and to report that they could not find a sign of another trap door. There probably was one in the olden days, Aunt Rosemary said, but it's probably been closed up. A sudden daring idea came to the girl detective. I'm going to crawl over to that lookout and see if anybody's in it, she told the two. Before either of them could object, object, she started to crawl along the ridge pole above the wooden shingled sides of the deeply slanted roof. Helen had raced up the ladder and now watched her friend fearfully. Be careful, Nancy, she warned. Nancy was doing just that. She must keep a perfect balance or, t or tumble down to an almost certain death. Halfway to the tower, the daring girl began to feel that she had been foolhardy but she was determined to reach her goal. Only five more feet to go, Nancy told herself presently. With a sigh of relief, she reached the tower and pulled herself up. It was circular and had openings on each side. She looked in. No ghost. Nancy decided to step inside the opening and examine the floor. She set one foot down, and, the me and immediately the boards rotted from the weather gave way beneath her. It's a good thing I didn't put my whole weight on it, she thought thankfully. Did you see anything, Helen called? Not a thing. The floor hasn't been in use for a long time. Then the ghost didn't come in by way of the roof, Helen stated. Nancy nodded in agreement. The only places left to look are the chimneys. The young sleuth told her friend, I'll check them. There were four of these and Nancy crawled to each one in turn. She looked inside but found nothing to suggest that the ghost used any of them for entry. Balancing herself against the last chimney, Nancy surveyed the countryside around her. What a beautiful, picturesque panorama it was, she thought. Not far away was the lazy little river whose water sparkled in the sunlight. The surrounding fields were green and sprinkled with patches of white daisies. Nancy looked down on the grounds of Twin Elms and tried in her mind to reconstruct the original landscaping. And here is a picture. That brick walk next to the property must have had a lovely boxwood hedge at one time, she said to herself. Her gaze now turned to Riverview Manor. The grounds were overgrown with weeds and suddenly... Several shutters were missing from the house. Suddenly, Nancy's attention was drawn to one of the uncovered window panes. Did she see a light moving inside? It disappeared a moment later, and Nancy could not be sure. Perhaps the sun shining on the glass had created an optical illusion. Still, somebody just might be in that house, she thought. The sooner I get over there and see what I can find out, the better. If the ghost is hiding out there, maybe he uses some underground passage from one of the outbuildings on the property. She crawled cautiously back to the trap door, and together the girls closed it. Aunt Rosemary had already gone downstairs to take care of her mother. Nancy told Helen <coughs> what she thought she had just seen in the neighboring mansion. I'll change my clothes right away. Then let's go see Mr. Dodd, the realtor broker for Riverview Manor. Half an hour later, the girls walked into the real estate office. Mr. Dodd himself was there, and Nancy asked himself about looking at Riverview Manor. I'm sorry, miss, he said, but the house has just been sold. Nancy was stunned. 
She could see all her plans crumbling into nothingness. Then a sudden thought came to her. Perhaps the new owner would not object if she looked around anyway. Would you mind telling me, Mr. Dodd, who purchased Riverview Manor? Not at all, the realtor replied. A man by the name of Nathan Gomber. That's the end of chapter 16. We will continue with chapter, se uh, I'm sorry, chapter 17. We will continue with chapter 18 later. I hope you all have a great day. Hope you guys are staying safe and healthy and I miss you guys so, so much. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube page and I'll see you guys later.